Yeah, hello, racing fans, and welcome to our Gallup TV preview show. It's for Saturday the 28th, where we race at Hollywood Bets, Durbanville, and alongside uh, uh, the Big T, Turfentine up in Gauteng. Of course, uh, we will be racing at Hollywood Bets Gravel on Sunday, so it's a massive weekend for you, the valued racing fan. And I trust that you're well. Looking forward to previewing the show with uh, Graham Hawkins as we introduce him now. Graham, it's a, it's a busy afternoon and it's uh, becoming that way now in uh, Cape Town. Expected uh, to uh, be this way leading up to all those feature races after the high felt season. But we've got 10 races on the go and some feature races as well. Yes, it is a long day. The first of the 10 races off at 11.20, so it's a bright and early start. The forecast suggests there'll be a little bit of light rain about, uh, which might be welcomed by many of the horsemen. A fantastic renewal of the match and stakes. We'll get into that a little bit later on. And, of course, the supporting feature is the Grade 3 Diana Stakes, uh, sponsored by Baker McVay, the match and stakes sponsored by CUDA, but as you say, lots of racing action and a tough, competitive, exciting card to look forward to at Hollywood Bets Durbanville. So you're the guy. You're going to steer us in the right direction, Graham. So we are with our form guides. We got pen or pencil in hand and we're ready to jot down the numbers. Let's begin in race number one, which doesn't form part of the exotics. You heard it from Graham. There are 10 races carded, so the bipod will begin in race number two. We'll bring up the field and have a look at the betting as a guide at the time of recording, which is a day before 24 hours. Number one, Chief Runner is at 28 to 10. Three is at two to one. Number four at six to one. Number eight at eight to one. 11 at seven to one and 12 is a scratching. I don't know what uh, you can suggest to us here in race number one, Graham, whether it's a punt on the head, a trifecta, exacta, maybe even uh, a roving banker. Uh, how can we get things off to a flyer in the first? Yeah, it's an interesting race. Uh, three promising, uh, rather four promising three-year-olds, all drawn well in gates numbers one, two, three, and four up against uh, older, hard-knocking, in-form maidens who are drawn a little wider in gates eight, nine, and 11. I'm going to play the quartet. I'm going to take my chances with number three, King's Quest. Uh, the form of the last one has been well franked. The second horse has come out to win and the fourth horse who finished behind King's Quest. That has come out to win. That was still many factor. It uh, doesn't look like a great race on paper when you see he was beaten eight lengths by Captain West, but I'm expecting King's Quest to improve over the 1,400 metres. He is my marginal first choice in a tough and competitive heat. I'm going three banker to win in the quartet by one, two, four, eight, nine, and 11. Uh, but certainly King's Quest is not a one -er. uh, There are many with winning chances. Expect improvement from Chief Runner and uh, as well as Summer Snow and Bounce Back. And then, as I said, the older hard-knocking Maidens, Royal Port Louis, Terminator and Mr. Belvedere are not without winning chances. So it's a nice competitive start to the 10 race card. Okay, Graham is suggesting that you can get a nice quartet dividend if you structure that perm and it falls into place. We're on to uh, uh, the second race now, which will kick off at the bipod and uh, we'll bring up the field with the betting. Number one is at five to two. Number two is trading at 14 to 10, three at 33 to 10. Then we got the seven to one shot horse number four. So it's uh, quite tight uh, between the, the next two in the betting market when you look past number two, Symphony in White, Aldo De Mayo and Candace Bass Robinson. And, um, you know, Candace Bass Robinson, we know how good she is, Graham, and what she can deliver. But, uh, you know, compared to the other stables that are firing, she's yet to, you know, really yeah, get things going like we used to seeing her have winners uh, regularly and more often uh, in Cape Town. Yes, Dees, but there are signs that the Candace Bass Robinson stable is uh, ready to hit top form. They had a good winner, Nordic Quest, and prior to that, of course, with Captain Arrow. And here they're represented by Symphony in White, who showed top class ability as a two year old, finishing a close third behind Quid Pro Quo and the Alan Robertson. Gimme's Countess to finish fourth their runs in the Diana Stakes later on. So there's every reason to believe that uh, Symphony in White is. We'll have every chance of making a winning comeback. We last saw on the 1st of June. If you go back to the 5th of May, she comfortably beat Kinda Wonderful. 
at uh, these terms by nearly two lengths. Kind of wonderful came out to win a feature race after that. So the form is strong. I'm in the camp of number two, Symphony in White, to make a winning return ahead of number one, Kind of Wonderful. But you can't ignore the chances of number three, Southern Sky. She's in the form of her life. She's older. She does give a little bit of weight away, but not as much as she would in a weight for age race. Her last two wins have been emphatic. She beat Naughty Quest, who has a seven to go, came out to win and win well in her next start. Winter Rainfall runs later in this card, so she's won at Hollywood Bets, Durbanville, Southern Skies. And with Richard Faria aboard, she does deserve the utmost respect. Go Like Flo did us a good turn by winning well last time out, holding out Polynomial. But I think she takes on a little tougher here, so she could uh, hope for a minor placing at best. But uh, 2, 1, 3 and 4 for me. But it's another interesting race where we see the youngsters come up against the well-seasoned older types. And Southern Skies is certainly going to make both numbers one kind of wonderful and Symphony in White pick up their feet. I chatted with Eric Sands. Kind of wonderful can possibly just need this run. She's not at her top, uh, but Symphony in White expects to go really well. Yes, she showed top class ability as a two year old. Okay, you heard it from Graham that juvenile form could come to the fore, but we respect Mike and Adam as his horse, the older horse that's in tremendous form. Graham did uh, mention that uh, he is going with a place accumulator for the show, so look sharp, that will come up at the end of the show. But the PA does begin in race number three, and uh, we'll have a look at the way they're betting here. Number one, B. Mary is at 14 to 10. Horse number two at 7 to 1. Number three at 8 to 1. Number five is at 7 to 2. Six is an 8 to 1 shot. And uh, the all important question when we get to the exotics, uh, leg one of the place accumulator, how many horses? Are we going with the favorite here, Graham, B. Mary, or are you running for some cover? I'm running for a little bit of cover. My first choice is number five, Love Shack. She's very game. She's very consistent. She's well treated here, I think, in this uh, particular race. Uh, she only has to give a little bit of weight away to, to be merry. The form of be merry's maiden win still has to stand up to scrutiny. And although be merry is drawn in pole position and a firm 15 to 10 favorite, I do think she could be vulnerable to number five, Love Shack. We were chatting about the Candace Bass Robinson stable. I'm expecting them to start churning out the winners in big numbers. And Love Shack is my top choice here ahead of number one, B. Merry. Those are the two that I'm including in the place accumulator. Once you look beyond these two, Easy Money, again, did us a very nice turn uh, when winning at a big price last time out. We tipped her on the show and she came through to deliver. But again, I think she meets a little tougher here. Certainly the average merit rating then was 62 and now 73. So it's quite a big step up in class for number six easy money three daphne's daughters interesting uh, she went to uh, fairview to win a maiden so i'm going to sit on the fence with number three daphne's daughter uh, captain's destiny a better run last time palo queen is usually as game and consistent as they come she has won at the country course she's got the worst of the draw to overcome but apprentice Burtis takes four kilograms off her back which should make her competitive and i wouldn't be surprised to see her in the mix but i'm going to rely on number five love shack and number one, be merry to get me through the first leg of the place accumulator uh, with a distinct preference for number five, Love Shack. That's trading at seven to two. And Graham Hawkins likes the second pick in the betting market and trying to beat a 14 to 10 shot in a bet like the exacta could be the way to go. The numbers that he's given for minor positions, six, three and ten. And that is leg one of the PA. Got every chance of doubling up there is Mr. Hawkins. Race number four is the big one and this is where the pick six will begin and just having a look at the six legs of this pick six I think it's going to get a sizable pool. We've got two feature races that form part of it and some quality racing on this Saturday at Hollywood Bets Durbanville. Race number four Graham number one is at eight to one number three at seven to one horse number five is an eight to one shot and then we got uh, number eleven Otaniqua at 28 to 10 and number 12 Air Raid is at 7 to 2. So Graham, uh, I don't know what you've made of uh, this horse thus far, uh, Otaniqua, but uh, um, you know that will be the obvious choice for most and the majority in the pick six. But would you go as far as to say that you know could be a possible 
you know, banker in that type of bit, or again, you know, you have to uh, be brave to do that? I think the draw is a concern. There's no doubt uh, that Otaniqua is a very, very nice horse in the making. He's done absolutely nothing wrong. He's won two of his three starts and was narrowly beaten by the uh, five-time winner shifting path in his second start. So you can expect another big effort from Otaniqua, uh, as well as the fellow three-year-old number 12, Air Raid, who's in fact drawn outside of him. So the draws are not going to help. Otaniqua and Air Raid, but Otaniqua does appear to have quite a lot of gate speed and could get into a nice position early. Uh, but I'm going to throw, apart from those uh, two three-year-olds, 11 Otaniqua and 12 Air Raid, I'm going to ignore the last run of number three, Kelp Forest. He's got a nice draw. I like the fact that he steps back to 12.50. Grand for Nico retains the right for the fourth consecutive time. I think he'll track the pace and uh, deliver in the closing stages. So, I expect him to put that last run behind him. His form prior to that was uh, very, very good. He's a hard-knocking, four-time winning five-year-old against the less exposed uh, three-year-olds, Otaniqua and Air Raid. And with the benefit of a good draw, I'm just going to head to my bets. Uh, I do think Otaniqua, as I said, is a very nice horse in the making. The same comment will apply to number 12, Air Raid. They've got any amounts of scope for improvement, any amount of upside. Uh, but just to throw in the hard knock at Kelp Forest in case things go awry. And then I'm very keen to see how number one definitely, yes, performs. He caught our eye on debut when beating my boy Lollipop. Uh, my boy Lollipop has done nothing for that form. Definitely, yes, a second run at the track here at Hollywood Bets Durbanville. Was nothing to write home about, uh, but I can't help but get the feeling that this very well-bred son of Ersting Gedricks, now jumping out of gate one, has got more to offer and certainly one to consider for the trifectas and quartets. Uh, but 3, 11 and 12 for me in the second leg of the place accumulator. Okay, Graham has got three runners there for the place accumulator, which should be good enough. But as he mentioned, luck in running could be the key between numbers 11 and 12. Then we move along to jackpot one, and there's a sweetener to the pool at Hollywood Bets, Durbanville. Take note, 250,000 Rand carried over. The estimated pool is a million Rand, and that could certainly uh, be the bet that many will be chasing on the day. Uh, double header, place uh, jackpot carryover as well at Turfentine. So we will go to the betting now, Graham, because this will be guidance that is needed for these next four legs for jackpot players. And uh, we will begin with horse uh, number five, uh, sorry, four, that is at six to one, along with number five at six to one. So four and five are at six to one. Horse number six, and Graham will be hoping to join the dots here, that's at five to two, seven at eight to one, along with number eight at eight to one. And then horse number 10 at 8 to 1. The betting tells a story here, Graham, because if you can't uh, be uh, joining the dots, uh, you know, excuse the pun, then uh, you are, uh, you know, I, I can actually see why this horse is priced up at the top of betting boards, Graham, but it'll give you no degree of confidence even if you, you know, try and analyze the form on its last start behind Oshan. Not many of his form lines have been franked, and that is an obvious concern for number six, Join the Dots. But there's a lot of talk in the town, Dees, for this horse, this four-year-old son of Erson Gedericks. Richard Faree rides for the first time, and there is anti-post to betting support for number six, Join the Dots. He ran a better race behind Norshan last time out. But again, one has to suspect the quality and the strength of that form. So I'm again ducking for a little bit of cover. Uh, number seven, Fire Flare, representing the... Dean Kanamaya stable. He's got some really nice runners at this meeting. And uh, he brings KwaZulu Natal form into the province, which may be a question mark, but his last two runs have been good. I expect him to be running on really nicely at the end. And then don't ignore the best weighted horse in the race, number eight, Eternal Optimist. Uh, she heads the best weighted column. And if you take the apprentice allowance into account, heads it even further. She'll just have 48 kilograms on her back. Now, she has been been disappointing. Uh, she's been placed in the last three starts. I've expected more from the Eric Sands daughter of Karari. Uh, but this is an opportunity where she might be able to dictate the running from the front and get away from them with only 48 kilograms in her back. Uh, so in order of preference, I'm going six, join the dots, 
7 Fire Flare and 8 Eternal Optimist. At the very least, I'm going to include all three of those in the first leg of the carryover jackpot. But that's not where the potential winners list ends. Twice the Master, Sudden Song. Ignatius gets the blinkers again, but it's been 728 days since he won. Fly Futura is knocking at the door. Uh, so this is not a cut and dried affair. If Join the Dots, there's a lot of confidence around, as I mentioned, but if jo Join the Dots doesn't deliver, uh, that throws the race wide open with chances to many. I think it's a very open race, this uh, KFC stakes over 2,000 metres. And uh, I think you've got to play pretty wide in the opening leg of the jackpot. Okay, Graham, I'm going to do an in-running jackpot for the valued racing fans out there. I'll jot the numbers down. And uh, this race has got 13 horses, Graham. You've given us three runners in numerical order, six, seven, and eight. So we have a budget to include three more runners. Which three would you consider with the three that you've already given? I'd love to add four, but you're not allowing me to do that. So uh, <laughs> I would go with numbers... Uh, I would go with numbers two, three, and five, but uh, that will probably mean Ignatius will win. If you gave me a card blanche, I'd go two, three, four, and five, along with six, seven, and eight. Uh, but I understand your ruling. It's not my ruling. Sure. In my first thing of the jackpot, I'm going to go two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, and another, I'm going to take my chances at banker number six, join the dots, just in case the street corner whispers are bang on target. Tell you what, Graham. I hate to leave out the four this time round because it is the bridge as well. At two, three, four, six, seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll have everything covered there. So we are going with Graham's numbers. We are going with seven runners here. Um, numbers two through to eight in the jackpot. I'll jot these numbers down. Let's see what happens and what the cost of the perm is. Let's move along to race number six, leg two of jackpot one, the carryover jackpot one. And here, number four, big unit, is at 7 to 1. Then we go on to number 10, Industrial Strength, who's a very interesting horse because he comes to the province with uh, form lines from KZN. Number 12 is at 6 to 1, and horse number 16 is at 8 to 1. Graham, I want to take you back to Industrial Strength's debut, and I'm sure you'll remember that clearly, especially what... Uh, you know, the horse uh, went on to do, I'm talking about the specialist and his next runs in the feature races. But considering the strength of that form line and how the horse won shed its maiden, this horse could be anything, Graham, is that a fair comment? Absolutely. He has uh, obviously been given a lot of time to mature and to develop and to get over whatever problems he might have had earlier in his career. He's a lightly raised, newly turned four-year-old. And as a four-year-old with a competitive merit rating of 78, he could be way, way ahead of the handicapper. He is the anti-post favourite and clearly one of the principals in the race. I'm only going with three horses. You have decided to bank a number four big unit. In the place accumulator, liked his last win. That was his first run as a gelding. I think he's ready to step forward. He's got a nice draw. So a big unit for me, uh, definitely in the mix and uh, taking a bit of a chance of bankering him in the place accumulator just to keep the perm a bit tight. But as far as the jackpot and the pick six is concerned, just two others that I want to mention. One of them, of course, being number 10, Industrial Strength. The other being number 12, Unicorn Alert who finished close up behind Big Unit last time. Unicorn Alert has a bit of an awkward draw to overcome, uh, but he must have a bright chance of uh, getting uh, getting home in this kind of race. But as you say, industrial strength is interesting because there's any amount of upside, and uh, he could certainly, could certainly be too good for this field. How many horses are we including in the jackpot then, Graham, considering we've got seven runners in leg one? These, I think we'll hope to get away with numbers 4, 10, and 12. 4, 10, and 12 for Graham Hawkins. Three runners there in leg number two. Then we go on uh, to race number seven. And uh, this is uh, where uh, we'll have the first of our two feature races, uh, the Diana Stakes. Number one, Summer Lily, 8 to 1. Horse number two at 8 to 1. Number four at 4 to 1. Number five, Gimme's Countess, uh, who we all know so well from uh, KZN. Uh, she's trading at five to four. And then number seven at eight to one. And it's double figures of balance. Uh, what do you make of the field, Graham? 
Nice competitive race. Uh, three three-year-olds all carrying 51 and a half against some hard-knocking older talented fillies, which include the likes of Princess Izzy and Rainbow Lorikeet, as well as Gold Poker Game and others. Uh, the three-year-olds are number three, Miss World, number five, Gimme's Countess, and uh, the other one being, who's the other one now? Number six, Dixieland Band. So, obviously, the search was on for lightweight riders to ride Miss World, Gimme's Countess, and Dixieland Band, and Serena Moodley has been flown into town to partner the favourite number five, Gimme's Countess. Clearly, Craig Zaki, who rides for the Kaya Stables, cannot get down to that weight. Now it's time for Gimme's Countess to step up. She won so well on debut, she was unlucky in the Alan Robertson, but she disappointed in the slipper. She comes back in the grade three Diana Stakes. She's got a huge reputation. She's the full sister to Gimme a Prince, who runs uh, later in the Cuda Matcham Stakes. So no excuses this time. She's ready. She's doing well. I had a chat with Dean Canamare. So Gimme's Countess, the pick of the three-year-olds for me, but I'm not going to rely on her solely because... Uh, uh, this is her first time at Hollywood Bets Durbanville. She could be a bit green. She goes around the left hand at turn for the first time. And I think the best of the older generation is number four, Princess Izzy. So I'm going to rely on numbers four and five to get me through. And perhaps we can narrow this leg of the jackpot down to just those two runners. Okay, I'm with you with that, uh, Graham. And we look forward to seeing number five, Gimme's Contest, as much as we are going to be watching all the other runners. But when it comes to you know, reputation and that type of thing. I'm sure all eyes will be on her to see how she goes at Hollywood Bets Durbanville. Race number eight, Graham mentioned, is the uh, Matcham Stakes. And uh, this is uh, going to be race number eight where we close this jackpot off. And uh, we are going smoothly in the jackpot. All we need to do now is survive leg number four. That carryover is 250,000. Estimated pool a million rand. Number two, Zapatellus, seven to one. Number four, at my command, is at three to one. Then we go on to number eight, Gimme a Prince, which is at 28 to 10. Nine, Sugar Mountain at eight to one. Ten, Questioning is a four to one shot, and it's double figures the balance. I like the look of this field, Graham. There's some proper quality in this race. Smashing lineup. Gimme a Prince, of course, returns after a full year off the track. He ran second in last year's renewal of the Matcham Stakes, when narrowly beaten by the champion Charles Dickens. Uh, Dean Canama has always held his horse in very, very high regard. He's now a six-year-old. He's a multiple grade one winner. He did go down to KZN. There was uh, hope that he would be able to participate in champion season, but he had uh, a slight setback, nothing too serious, but they decided to take the cautious route and not race him in KwaZulu Natal. He's not had a gallop. He's doing well back at home. He's not fully wound up. They're bigger fish to fry. And, of course, the, the first and most important thing is for Gimme a Prince to come back sound. But uh, Dean Kanama is expecting a good run. He's just that good a horse. But... Can he win after a full year off the track? Uh, that remains open to question. And talking about question, questioning is unbeaten three from three at the track. He's had a recent run under the belt. He does have a bit of a wide jaw to overcome. Uh, but he is the horse to beat in current form. At my command, who also races in the Kaya Stable Silks like number eight, Gimme a Prince. So they've certainly got a strong hand here. There's a nibble in the anti post market for number four, At my command. Richard Faree writes that, whereas Craig Zaki writes, Gimme a Prince. At my command has for too long been the bridesmaid. He deserves a change of fortune and should go well here. Zapatillas has got three lengths to find with questioning on their last performance, but that was Zapatillas' first run as a gelding. From gate two, he can step forward and get a lot closer to questioning. I think those are the four principles in a classy lineup. You've got to have a measure of respect for number nine, Sugar Mountain, but I'd be surprised at these weights if Sugar Mountain could match strikes with all of Zapatillas at my command. Give me a prince in questioning. Questioning is my marginal first choice, uh, but it should be a great race, and I think those four could be good enough to get us through the final leg of the jackpot. In order of preference, 10, 4, 8, and 2. The next pick would be number 9, Sugar Mountain. But I'm really looking forward to this race. I'm really looking forward to seeing Gimme a Prince in action. I hope he comes through the race safe and sound. And I'd be delighted, notwithstanding my selection, I'd be delighted if he weighed a winning return to racing action because he's that classy an individual.
Yeah, he's already given us some wonderful memories, Graham, and uh, we look forward to his return on Saturday. So Graham has given us four runners there as we go on to race number nine, where we'll close things off for the place accumulator and for the pick six. But this is leg number three of Jackpot 2. I uh, failed to mention to you that Jackpot 2 begins in race number seven, guys. So Jackpot 1, race number five, that's the carryover Jackpot, and then Jackpot 2 does begin in race number seven. So this will be the penultimate leg of that bet. Betting here in the ninth race, Graham, number two speed racer is at five to one. Then we go on to number five, Night Bomber at seven to two. Six is trading at five to one. 9 is an 8 to 1, and 11 and 12 are 4 to 1 and 5 to 1, respectively. This is one of the races that I think you'll get a, a, a very useful quarter dividend, regardless of the results. But it's all about structure here, Graham. And I'd like to hear your thoughts. Maybe you can give us a roving banker or two. Tough race, Dees, and the last race was even tougher. Uh, my top choice in the race would be number two speed racer. So if you're looking for a floating banker, then I'd go with number two speed racer. Good, consistent form, nice draw. Every reason to believe he's going to be extremely competitive. From gate number two, he ran second behind Night Bomber last time out. Could reverse the order with number five, Night Bomber. Uh, so if you're looking for a roving banker, then my choice would be number two speed racer. I have healthy respect at big odds for number three, Suti. Also from an inside gate, I think Suti's going to go well. Night Bomber's on a hat-trick and could well complete the hat-trick, but he's got a tougher task, slightly tougher task at the weights this time around. I've gone against him. Uh, winter Rainfall is very well treated by the conditions of the Cape B stakes. He heads the best weighted column quite comfortably. So you have to throw number six Winter Rainfall into the mix. And then 11 Mauritius Kestrel and 12 Surge of Power, both interesting three-year-olds, drawn worst of all in this 12 horse field. Both are one-time winners and both very highly rated at 105 and 103. And I'm going to sit and wait to see whether these two three-year-olds confirm that level of rating this early in their career. So I'm looking elsewhere other than number 11, Mauritius Kestrel, and 12, Surge of Power for the winner, but obviously they can get into the play as far as the exactors, trifectas, and quartets are concerned. Final leg of the place to accumulate, I'm going numbers two, Speed Racer, three, Suti, and six, Winter Rainfall. My definite preference in the race is number two, Speed Racer. Watch for a better effort for number nine, uh, Paratrooper. There's been a bit of anti-post market support for him. And gradually, the four-year-old son of Lancaster Bomber is coming down the ratings. At number nine, Graham's talking about that support. It's from 10 to 1 into 8 to 1. But his roving banker is going to be number two, Speed Racer. Then we go on to race number 10, and uh, Graham mentioned, well, if race 9 was tough, this could be tougher. So, number 1 is at 6 to 1, number 3 at 5 to 1, number 4 is at 5 to 1. Uh, 6 uh, from 10 to 1, that is now trading, in fact, from 12 to 1, that is now trading at 8 to 1. Then we got number 10, Beneath the Moon, at 7 to 1. 11 is at 8 to 1. 12, Jet Green is at 11 to 2. And uh, that is it, Graham. Uh, you mentioned <laughs> even a tougher race. But this is the race that closes off Jackpot 2, Graham. And your guidance uh, thus far has been excellent because we, we started off Jackpot 2 with just two runners, numbers 4 and 5. But I'm going to be reading out Jackpot 1 for the guys after this preview. So I think at this point in time, it's quite an inexpensive spend, Graham, if the guys have been jotting down your numbers for Jackpot 2. So you've got some leeway. You've got some spend here. I know we jokingly often refer to Phillies and Mayors races, the F&M races as field and more. This Class 5 handicap certainly fits that bill over 12.50. I might, tongue-in-cheek, I might be heading for the exit before this race is run. Uh, but it is an interesting race. It's a competitive race if you get it right. If you analyse it correctly, I think the quartet is obviously going to produce a, a really nice dividend. Um, I'm in the camp of number one, Becky Sharp, uh, and I have no good reason for saying that other than She's been drawn worst of all in her last two starts. I've expected better. She's a, she's a draw spike of note. Uh, 10 out of 10 in a penultimate start. 11 out of 11 in her last start. So I'm looking for improvement from gate one. I'm looking for Becky Sharp, who's competitively rated over mark of 68 to run better. Royal Lytham will go better than she did last time. 
on board and Veronique, what you see is what you get. They've got obvious chances from good draws. Their form suggests they're right there with a with a big shot of taking top honours. Bit of money around, as you've mentioned, for number six ticket to Vegas. Uh, approaching the anniversary of a, of a maiden win. 357 days ago on the 7th of October at Hollywood Bets Durbanville over 1,400 metres. She beat Ellerix. She's dropped another five pounds in the rating. She could be a sneaker in the race and certainly one to throw into your trifectas and quartets. Number six, take her to Vegas. Number seven, why not, Jackie, if you're looking for another potential upset filly in the race? This one fits the bill. She surprised before and she could surprise again. Uh, but I could go on and on and on. Chances also to Black Path, Beneath the Moon, Sea Veloce and Jet Green. Uh, so this is not an easy race to nail your colours to the master to narrow it down. Uh, but in the purposes of summarising it, Becky Sharp, my top choice, ahead of four, Veronique, then three on board, then six, Ticket to Vegas, then two, Royal Lytham, and seven, why not, Jackie? Uh, but as I say, this is definitely a field and more race. Okay, Graham has given us his thoughts on the 10th race. Before we hand over to him for his suggested bet, which is a place accumulator that will come up on screen, I mentioned that we did an in-running jackpot. Race number five is that carryover, 250,000. You need to get on by 13.30, estimated pool 1 million rand. In running Gallup TV preview show for Hollywood Bets, Durbanville jackpot is as follows. Numbers two through to eight for leg number one, basically two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Leg number two, four, 10 and 12. Leg number three, numbers four and five. And we close that jackpot off with four runners, two, four, eight and 10. And considering that you are playing into a pool that's estimated to reach 1 million, I think it's quite an inexpensive spend, 168 Rand. We thank Graham for those numbers. But Graham, over to you for your place accumulator. First leg of the PA, 12.25. As I said, it's a bright and early start at Hollywood Bets Durbanville, so don't get caught napping the first of the 10 races at 11.20. Leg one, numbers 1B, Marion, 5, Love, Shack. Second leg, numbers 3, Kelp Forest, 11, Otaniqua, and 12, Air Raid. Third leg, numbers 6, Join the Dot, 7, Fire Flare, and 8, Eternal Optimist. Then taking my chances with number 4, Big Unit, as a banker in the fourth leg, uh, where we also fancy 10, Industrial Strength, and 12, 12 unicorn alert four and five in the next that's princess easy and gimme's countess four and ten in the pen ultimate which is at my command and questioning and the last eight numbers two three and six speed racer sooty and winter rainfall that is my suggested place accumulator for this very competitive race meeting at hollywood bed's terminal graham in closing i just want to say that uh, though racing fans would have noticed that i'm not you know, scribbling around in my computer form or whatever form guard I'm using. I'm not flipping on the pages. And I'm old school, you know, I like the hot hard copy with the pen in hand and scribbling around the book. It's always been that way and I love it that way. I do something I wouldn't want to change. But I must just compliment that I had no option but to use my device for this show. And wherever you go on the device, it's quite user-friendly, isn't it? You know, we're downloading the form guides and the betting, etc. I must say that I'm impressed that I got through it with my device this morning, Graham. Like you, I'm old school. I print, uh, I print out the book and uh, scribble all over it. But yes, when times are of emergency, it's certainly the platforms are great. Uh, great opportunities to study forming to get through it without necessarily having to print out all the form guides. Thanks a lot, Graham. Thanks for your time and uh, have a blast. Hopefully everything falls into place this Saturday. Thanks, Dees. Go, Wally. Yeah, on behalf of the Gallup TV team, uh, Graham Hawkins, myself, Dees Dine, and to you, the Valley Racing fan, hopefully it turns out to be a wonderful day racing at Hollywood Bets, Durbanville. Until we meet again, you take care. Salani Garshley.